and yet the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. He got elected, I didn't get elected. Watching the disaster of his administration, and I was very fond of him, and still am fond of the memory of the man, but in 1,000 days, he invades Cuba unsuccessfully, and then ends by heating up the war in Vietnam. And we must put this on President Kennedy's head. He got us into it in October 63, when he changed the 600 advisors we had there to 20,000 committed troops and is now part of the Kennedy legend that had he lived, this war would not have taken place or would not have pursued, it would not have escalated. I can promise you as much as you can guess anything, I mean, of a speculative nature, that he would have been as deeply in it as Johnson. With the Kennedy in the summer of 63 had lost students in America. Yeah. He had lost the liberals. He was under tremendous pressure on all directions. He had done practically nothing as president of the United States except maintain this image he made some marvelous speeches of an analytical nature. There was no subject that at one time or another he did not say the wisest thing about. And no action ever followed any speech. Well, he... The thing about myths and legends, should we allow reality to intrude? The Kennedy legend is a very good one for the world and it's a very good one for the United States. And as a critic, I'm sort of split because on the one hand, I know it's not true. And on the other hand, I think, well, it, if it's not true, it ought to be true. I liked him tremendously, and I hang his picture in my library, not as an icon, not as a memory of Camelot, not as a memory of glorious nights at the White House or in Bel Air, but never again to be taken in by anybody's charm. But he was one of the most charming men I've ever known, one of the most intelligent, and one of the most disastrous presidents I think we've ever had.